I really enjoy working with fabric. And today I am going to be creating several different pieces so that I can cozy up my home and change it up for fall. Hey there, my name is Yami. I am your Latina next door. Welcome back to Mi Casa, where I share high-end home decor and DIYs on a budget as well as extreme before and after room transformations. So if that's something you'd enjoy, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe so that you too can become part of the familia. Before we get started, the Look For Less Challenge is back this month. And at the end of this video, I am gonna share the details on when your projects are due and everything else if you wanna join in on the fun. So make sure you stick to the end of this video so you can get all the details for this month's Look For Less Challenge. Also, if you haven't already, I know a lot of you have, but if you haven't seen my last video where I shared my Decorate With Me Fall video for my living space, I am hosting a huge giveaway, a huge fall makeover giveaway, and I wanna make sure you know about that so that you can enter it. So if you haven't seen that video, I'll make sure to include it in the description box below so you have a chance to enter in the contest. Now, one of the favorite things that I enjoy doing is sewing. And not only does it give me the ability to create unique pieces for my home, but it also allows me to save money because out of a couple of yards of fabric, I usually can create more than one project. As a matter of fact, whenever I do buy fabric, I usually always have more than one project in mind every single time. And I thought it would be perfect to make a few different things for my home this fall season to cozy it up a bit and change things around. So that's what I ended up doing in this video. Hope you enjoy. So I purchased this beautiful striped light khaki and dark beige fabric from Hobby Lobby. The fabric was originally $9.99, but it was 30% off, so I got it at $6.99 a yard. I ended up getting three yards because I did want a very long piece of fabric in order to create a table runner for my dining room table. However, I did have other plans for it as well. And so for this DIY right here, I'm gonna be doing these really beautiful envelope cushion covers for my sofa. And you probably have already seen these because these were featured in my last video. Now these cushion covers are gonna be for a 20 by 20 pillow cover and I am cutting it at 20 by 20. I'm not sure if you know, but whenever you create cushion covers, you're actually supposed to cut the fabric the same size as your cushion cover. So there's no need to add additional inches for allowance. I had actually read that before and I didn't understand it and I have in the past cut covers that were a little bit bigger than the actual cushion cover and they were loose <laughs> so I guess it's true you're supposed to cut it the exact size as your cushion and it really does help make a nice tight cushion now one way you can save even more when creating your own cushions is you can always use a complementary color that's a little bit more inexpensive for the back of your cushions my stripe fabric wasn't necessarily expensive, but since I do want to do several DIYs with it, I want to stretch its use as much as possible. So I had this fabric and you can get a couple of yards at Walmart for $10, so that's $5 a yard. And I've had this and it was just the perfect color to go with this stripe fabric. So I went ahead and cut the pieces for the back envelope of the cushion. So how you come up with the size of the two back flaps to create your envelope is pretty easy. You just take the full height or width, usually they're all the same, it's a 20 by 20 pillow, and you add six and divide by two. So in this case, I would add six to 20, which would create 26, divide by two. I need to create 13 inch little flaps for the back of my cover. So just as a recap, I'd have one 20 by 20 front panel and for the back, I'd have two 13 by 20 envelope panels. After I have my pieces cut, I take the front striped panel and I make sure I have it face in this case. It's going to be facing me and then I put the two envelope pieces on top overlapping each other. Now 
The next thing I'm going to do is I am going to pin both ends. And then I'm going to sew both ends down. After the two ends are sewed, then I am going to create hems on the two back envelope panels, making sure that the hem faces the correct way. After both of those ends are sewn, I lay the cushion cover back on the table and I lay it flat. Then I make sure that both envelope pieces are overlapping nice and straight and then I pin both of those open edges down. And then I sew those two sides down. And I like to make sure I kind of go over back and forth a little bit on the two edges where the envelope meets because the constant opening and closing might tug at the stitching and having a little extra stitch there will help it stay in place and last longer. Now honestly the thing that takes the longest is cutting up the fabric and what I like to do when I do several cushions is I like to have all of my pieces cut and ready to go and all I have to do is just sit down on my sewing machine and stitch them all together. The last thing I do is use my serger on all of the inside edges so that it prevents the fabric from fraying and gives it additional strength and all the seams. And that's all there is to it. Now the next project I'm making is that table runner that I mentioned previously. Now since my table is so long, I will actually be using three full yards of this. The first thing I do is basically do a hem all along one of the edges and all I do is just roll it over twice and then just pin them in place. And when you have a striped fabric, it's actually really nice because you make sure you follow along on the same stripe and you know that your edge is nice and straight. After I finish pinning down that one side, I took my scissors and cut off the excess edge. I generally like to make my table runners about 15 inches width. My table is pretty large and this size looks good on it and all I do is cut down that stripe all the way down to the other end of the fabric. And then I fold that edge twice over on itself and then pin it down. And next I sew both sides down. After the two long ends are done, then I fold over both of the smaller edges, again the same way, just fold it in twice, and then I sew those two ends. And that's pretty much it for a table runner. My next DIY is going to be another cushion cover. However, this one's going to be a little different because it is inspired by my previous blue stripe cushion covers that I created two springs ago. I really love those cushions and I love the way they look and I thought I would try my hand at recreating this for a larger lumbar pillow that I bought for my bed. Now this cushion cover is going to be slightly different from my blue ones. Obviously the colors are going to be different and the stripes are going to be horizontal and that's just because That's how the stripes were on my remaining piece of fabric So that's what I went with and I'm also going to be adding a little fold to the bottom as you see right here The last fabric kind of lays flat on the front of the cushion And I thought it would be nice to add like a different dimension kind of make it look like a band of fabric is across the top 
of the pillow cushion cover where I'm going to sew my buttons. So I know you can't see it here because of the stripes, but you do get to see it in person and I kind of like that little extra detail. Now I know I didn't show this, but that very bottom edge of the fabric where I'm pinning is actually already hemmed. The pillow that I did end up getting is a 14 by 28 inch. And before finalizing where I really wanted the fabric and cushions to kind of like lay on the pillow, I just laid it on top and started kind of spacing everything out to see how it would look. Now again, I'll be using the same fabric that I use as a backing for my other cushions for this cushion as well. Now I needed to add fabric to the bottom of the front panel for this particular cushion because obviously I only wanted the stripe fabric to go halfway down the front. So I just needed to cut enough to cover the rest of the way. Next, I went ahead and sewed down that little fold over detail that I did to the very bottom of that fabric piece. Now, because I folded over that fabric, it will create this little flap naturally. So I will be stitching it on that side as well so that it can kind of mirror the hem on the other side. Next, I'm pinning the remainder of the fabric that I need for the bottom of the front panel, and I'm just going straight down. I sew those two pieces of fabric together to create my full front piece, and I follow the original hemline, that way it looks nice and neat. Now the stripe fabric is a little bit longer than what I need for the front panel, but I'm just gonna fold it over for the back of the cushion so it's going to be one of my envelope flaps however it's a little bit shorter than what i need so i'm basically just going to measure out a bottom flap in that solid lighter color and i'm going to make it a little bit longer to make up for the fact that this flap from the top that's with the striped fabric is not as long as it should be but it will work out in the end now as you can see here i'm already folding over and creating a hem for that top piece of fabric that's going to fold over for the envelope flap. I'm going to sew that hem down. And then I'm going to attach the other envelope flap to the other side of the white fabric. And then I'm going to sew that down. Now the rest of the tutorial is basically the same as the very first one. Now that we have all of the pieces of fabric sewn together, it's time to seal the edges that close the two remaining sides of the cushion that are still open. Then after sewing the inside edges with a serger, it was time to add the buttons. I try to lay them out as evenly as possible and then I double check with my fabric measuring tape and then when I like the placement of each of the buttons, I just add a little pin to each center of each button on the fabric. That way it holds my place while I stitch them on. And then I just hand sew the buttons on. And for this, I like to use embroidery thread because it is thicker and it takes less time to go around the button to attach it. And I just think it's just sturdier, so that's what I use for this. I really do like how this is a little bit different than just a plain old fabric cushion. I do like adding elements like buttons and different fabrics and just patterns into play to make my cushions a little bit more unique. And that is it for this DIY. Now so far all of the DIYs that I've created can be used for fall because of the colors. However, they can very well be used at other times of the year because they are very neutral. 
So I wanted to create something that was specifically for fall. So I decided to draw a few pumpkin forms and create beautiful little pumpkins for display. My inspiration came from something that I actually saw on Etsy and I just wanted to try them out for myself because they were a little pricey. So after I drew my little pumpkin forms, I simply cut them out to create a pattern. After I cut them, I pinned them onto some scrap fabric, the same type that I was using in my previous projects, and then I traced around the form. I removed the pattern, but then using the pins to keep the pumpkin in place with the fabric behind it, because I do need two sides of this little pumpkin, I went ahead and cut around the pattern. In addition to cutting the pumpkin, I also cut a small square for a little patchwork. Now I did also cut pumpkins out in the stripe fabric, as well as little square patches and what I'm doing right here is sewing my little stripe patch onto my little white pumpkin. Now after the little patches are sewn on you're gonna take your pumpkin pattern and you're gonna sew along the edges. Now I'm just gonna sew this on with the right side out leaving the edges to fray naturally to give it a little bit more of a rustic look. You want to go around the pumpkin but leave a little section so that you can stuff it with some polyester stuffing. Next you're going to want to start filling in your little pumpkins, making sure that you get them inside the little stems as well. After I finished stuffing the little pumpkins, I just hand stitched the remaining little hole that I needed to seal them. Next, I decided to add this really nice white jute that I found at my local Walmart. I hadn't seen that before, so I picked it up and it's really nice quality. So I decided to just add a little bows to the top of the stems of the pumpkins. And that's basically it for this DIY. And there's so many uses for this. You can put it on a nice tear tray, as a vase filler, on your coffee table in a tray. I think these are just adorable for fall. Well, that is it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up. And let me know in the comments below which one of these different projects was your favorite. All right, so now for the details for this month's Look For Less Challenge. Now, if you are not familiar with the Look For Less Challenge, this challenge was something that I created very early on when I first started my channel. It's something that I used to do pretty regularly, but now I am trying to space it out and do it every quarter. So if you're not familiar with the details of the Look For Less Challenge, it is a challenge where I challenge other YouTubers or yourself if you want to try this out to recreate something from a high-end home decor store for a whole lot less. We all love that high-end look, but we don't always have to spend it to achieve it. So that's how this challenge came about. Of course, there are a few rules if you would like to participate. And rule number one is that you have two weeks to complete this challenge. Your projects and videos are due Wednesday, September 22nd at 10 a.m. That is Wednesday, September 22nd at 10 a.m. And so rule number two, make sure you mention my name as the host of this challenge. That's Yami, the Latina next door. Make sure to include a link to my channel as well as the link to the playlist where all the participants will be able to upload their video onto that playlist so that everybody can see everything that everyone created. I will provide the link the minute the challenge goes live and it will be in my description box for you to upload your videos and share it on your channels as well. Make sure to use the hashtag look for less challenge in your description as well so that everyone can easily find our challenge. Rule number three, the item has to be a home decor piece. It could be as big as you want it, like a piece of furniture or as small, like a napkin ring. Either way, it's up to you. 
Just make sure it is a piece for your home that you would like to recreate. Rule number four, I wanna see your original inspiration piece along with the price tag next to your recreated piece and how much it costs for you to recreate it because we wanna see how well you did and how much you saved. And those are the rules. You can create one piece or several pieces if you wish. I can't wait to see what everyone creates this month and I look forward to seeing all of your videos. I hope you guys are doing great and I will see you guys next week with another home decor and DIY video. Until then, adios.